Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dorotea and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to crochet these lovely baby leggings. The leggings have a stretchy ribbing around the waist area and a beautiful shell stitch pattern along legs. The pattern is pretty easy to understand. It uses basic stitches and techniques. All of them will also be demonstrated in this tutorial. The basic written instructions for these baby pants can be found on my blog Crochet Patterns and you can get a PDF pattern with an additional size in my pattern shops on Etsy, Reverly and Lovecraft. I will leave all the links in the description box below. We are going to need some yarn, stitch markers, tapestry needle, 4mm crochet hook and scissors. Few words about the yarn. I'm going to use yarn and colors, epic yarn in color 47, which is called Old Pink. This is an iron weight yarn, it is 100% cotton yarn and you will need two skeins for the size 0 to 6 months. We are going to start off by making a foundation chain made of 8 chains. Start your foundation chain with a slip knot. Insert the hook into the loop, pull the yarn end and adjust the tightness of the yarn around your hook. Then create 8 chains. You create a chain just by wrapping the yarn around your hook and then pulling the yarn through. Repeat that 8 times. When you have that, skip the first chain, rotate the foundation chain so that the side with just one loop is facing up. Those loops are called back bumps and work one single crochet into each back bump all the way across. That is 7 times in total. Single crochet stitches are very easy to make, all you have to do is to insert the hook into the loop. Wrap the yarn around your hook and pull it through. That will give you two loops on your crochet hook. Then yarn over again one last time and pull the yarn through both loops on your hook. Repeat that for every single crochet stitch in this row. Always optional but very useful are stitch markers. You will see me inserting the stitch marker into the first stitch of the row and then slowly moving the stitch markers up to the next row as I go. If you feel you don't need them, that's perfectly fine, but they are something that I would personally recommend to try out to the beginners and people who sometimes lose the track of their stitches. Now that your first row is complete, create a turning chain, in this case chain 1 and turn your work. If you look at your first row of single crochet stitches from the top down, you see two loops. The one that is closer to you is called front loop and the one that is further away from you is called back loop. Now from this row on you are going to use back loops only. Create a turning chain, in this case chain 1 and turn your work. Insert the hook into the back loop, yarn over and pull the yarn through and finish the first single crochet stitch. Now repeat that for each stitch all the way across to the end of the row too.
This is now row 3. Create a turning chain that is chain 1 and turn your work. Insert the hook into the back loop and create your first single crochet stitch of this row. After that, repeat the stitches all the way to the end of the row. From here on is pretty simple and straightforward. At the beginning of each row, chain 1, then turn your work and then create a row of single crochet stitches by using back loops only. You can already see that the rows are forming a fabric very similar to the ribbing you usually see on the sweaters, around the lower bottom end or around the wrist area and that is exactly what we need. Continue working on rows of single crochet stitches made into the back loops only until you reach row 70 and that is 70 with our first 3 rows that we finish together. Now you can pause the video here and come back when you finish all 70 rows. Now that we have all 70 rows of single crochet stitches, we are going to join both ends of the ribbing together. We are going to start with a single chain. Line up both ends of the ribbing, make sure the ribbing is not twisted or aligned in any uneven way and start joining 2 and 2 stitches together, one from each end of the ribbing. For that, you can use both or just one loop of each stitch. For joining both ends of the ribbing together, use slip stitches. Insert the hook into the stitch, grab the yarn, pull it through the stitch and the loop on your hook. And that is all you have to do to make a slip stitch. This is a very simple and easy crochet stitch. When you finish all 7 slip stitches and your ribbing is nicely joined together, jump over to the second part of the pattern and that is the pattern for the so-called middle part, the area between the waist, so the ribbing and the legs. Our ribbing is now complete, from here on we are not going to work in rows anymore but in rounds instead, which means we are going to join each round together with a slip stitch. Also we are not going to work up and down anymore but around the hip area. Your ribbing has a right and wrong side, the wrong side is the one where you can see the seam made of slip stitches joining both ends of the ribbing together, so make sure that side is on the inner side and we are going to work right side facing out. So chain 1 and leave the row to a proper height, when you have that start working one single crochet into each row on the ribbing all the way around and because our ribbing is 70 rows long we are going to get 70 new single crochet stitches and that will serve us as a base for the rest of the pants. Work your stitches nice and even all the way around the waist area. Remember, one row, one single crochet. When you have all 70 single crochet stitches, join the round with a slip stitch. So insert the hook into the very first stitch of this round, catch the yarn on the other side and pull it through both, so stitch and loop on the hook. Just remember, this slip stitch does not count as a stitch in the pattern, it's there just to keep the round together and we will actually skip it in our next round. And we are going to create one new slip stitch for each round we make. Also very important, we are going to turn our work after each round we make. Let's start with round 2. This round is a tiny bit different. We are going to use a new crochet stitch called double crochet. This stitch is much taller than single crochet or even half double crochet if you are familiar with it. Therefore, we are going to start with chain 2. So we are going to build 2 chains for our turning chain. 
turn your work and work one double crochet into each of the first 15 stitches. Skip the slip stitch, that would be your very first stitch of the round because you've just turned the round and that is the very last stitch we've made in round 1. Let's make our first double crochet together. So yarn over, insert the hook into the stitch, yarn over and pull the yarn through. Now you have 3 loops on your hook, yarn over and pull the yarn through first 2, yarn over and pull the yarn through the remaining 2 on your hook. Continue working double crochet stitches until you reach double crochet number 15. Now that you finished the first 15 stitches, we are going to start building our shell stitch pattern that starts right below the waist and spreads all the way down to the ankles. We are going to skip 2 stitches first and then we are going to work 2 double crochet stitches, 1 chain and 2 double crochet stitches again into the same stitch. With this stitch pattern we are not gaining or losing any stitches, we are keeping the same amount of stitches as in our previous round. That's why we are skipping 2 stitches on each side of the shell, which makes it 5 stitches altogether. So skip 2 and work 1 double crochet into each of next 30 stitches. Create your second shell, so skip 2, work 2 double crochet stitches, 1 chain and 2 double crochet stitches into the same stitch. Then skip 2 stitches again and work 1 double crochet into each of last 15 stitches. Finish the round with a slip stitch and your second round is complete. The next 6 rounds are exactly the same as round 2, same pattern, same stitch count, chain 2 for the turning chain, turn your work, double crochet 15, shell, 
double crochet 30, second shell and then double crochet 15 and slip stitch to finish the round. So the only difference is where you make your shells. In round 2, where we've just started with our shell stitches, it was super easy. The shell stitches were made into the single crochet stitches from the row below, but in the following rounds, the shell stitches are made around the chain 1 space from the row below, and that chain 1 space is right in the middle of the shell, which makes it even easier to locate and continue with your work. You can make your new shell stitch into the chain too, that's perfectly fine, but it's much easier to crochet around the chain rather into it. You can pause the video here, finish all 6 rounds and then come back to learn how to make the legs. And if you're not quite sure what comes next, hop over to my blog and check the written instructions there, the link will be in the description box below. This is now the last segment of the tutorial where we will learn how to create legs for our pants or the leggings. So the pattern for both legs is the same. I'm going to show you how to do one and how to start the next one and then you are going to continue by yourself. So let's start. Take four stitch markers. We are going to need two for the front and two for the back side of the pants. Each stitch marker will represent starting or ending point of our first round. The side with the yarn tail is our back side. Take two stitch markers and place each on one side of the slip stitch. When you have that, start counting stitches. So you have to have 15 double crochet stitches, one shell and then 15 double crochet stitches on each side. Place the stitch marker into that last stitch, so stitch number 15, and do that for the other side too. Here you have a closer look at my marked stitches, one on each side of the slip stitch and two on the front, exactly 30 double crochet stitches and one shell away. Place the pants in front of you, back side up, open the stitch marker on left side, save the stitch marker for later and insert the crochet hook into the same stitch. Attach the yarn to your main piece with two chains, which will at the same time represent our turning chain. Then work one double crochet into each of next 15 stitches. Start your double crochet stitches in the same stitch as you used for your turning chain. Create a shell stitch, so skip 2, work 2 double crochet stitches, 1 chain and then 2 double crochet stitches around the chain 1 space into the shell stitch from the row below, skip 2 stitches, then work 1 double crochet into each of next 14 stitches. Now only one stitch left and this one is a tiny bit different from the rest of our double crochet stitches. So our aim here is to create a double crochet stitch and join this stitch with our very first stitch of the round and create a separation between two legs on our pants without a big hole between the legs. We will yarn over first, then insert a hook into the stitch below and into the bottom of the very first stitch of this round. When you have that, yarn over and pull the loop through and finish the double crochet stitch. And you can now see that both ends of the round are now nicely joined together. 
Now create a slip stitch and finish the round. The first round is now complete, 7 to go. We are in round 2. This round has 2 decreases, one at the beginning and one at the end of the round. Start with chain 2, turn your work, skip the slip stitch from the row below and then join 2 double crochet stitches together. Yarn over, insert the hook into the stitch, yarn over and pull it through. Yarn over, pull through first 2 stitches. Yarn over, insert the hook into the stitch yarn over and pull it through, yarn over, pull through first two stitches, you have now three loops on your crochet hook, yarn over one last time and pull the loop through all the loops on your crochet hook. Continue with double crochet stitches, work one double crochet into each of next 13 stitches, after that create a shell stitch, So skip 2 stitches, work 2 double crochet stitches, 1 chain and then 2 double crochet stitches again into the same stitch. Skip 2. When you have that, work 1 double crochet into each of next 13. Two stitches left, join those two with a double crochet stitch. Finish the round with a slip stitch and your second round is now complete. We are now in round 3, so start the round with a turning chain, chain 2, turn your work and work one double crochet into each of next 14 stitches. Create a shell stitch, so skip 2, work 2 double crochet stitches, 1 chain and 2 double crochet stitches again around the chain 1 space from the row below. Skip 2 stitches, now work 1 double crochet into each of next 14 stitches. Finish the round with a slip stitch and continue with round 4. Round 4 has 2 decreases, one at the beginning and one at the end of the round. Start with the turning chain, so chain 2 and then turn your work. 
After that, join the first two with a double crochet to together stitch. Make sure you skip the slip stitch at the beginning of the round, otherwise you will add one additional stitch to your round. Work one double crochet into each of next 12 stitches. Create a shell stitch. So skip two, work two double crochet stitches, one chain, and then two double crochet stitches again around the chain one space from the row below. Then skip two stitches. Now work one double crochet into each of next 12 stitches. Join the last two stitches with a double crochet two together stitch and then finish the round with a slip stitch. Round 5. Create a turning chain, so chain 2, then turn your work. Skip the slip stitch at the beginning of the round and create one double crochet into each of next 13 stitches. When you have that, create a shell. So skip two, work two double crochet stitches, one chain and two double crochet stitches, again around the chain one space from the row below. After that, skip two stitches. Now work one double crochet into each of next 13. Finish the round with a slip stitch. We are now in round 5. This round has two decreases, one at the beginning and one at the end of the round. Start with a turning chain, so chain 2 and then turn your work. After that, join the first two with a double crochet two together stitch. Make sure you skip the slip stitch at the beginning of the round, otherwise you will get one additional stitch. Work 
work one double crochet into each of next 11 stitches Then create a shell stitch, so skip 2, work 2 double crochet stitches, 1 chain and 2 double crochet stitches again around the chain 1 space from the row below, skip 2 stitches, now work 1 double crochet into each of next 11 stitches. Join last two stitches with a double crochet to together stitch, then finish the round with a slip stitch. This is now round 7, which is also our last round here. We are going to continue with the second leg after we finish this round. Start with a turning chain, so chain 2, then turn your work. Join the first two with a double crochet 2 together stitch. After that, work one double crochet into each of next 10 stitches. Create a shell stitch, so skip 2, work 2 double crochet stitches, 1 chain and 2 double crochet stitches again around the chain 1 space from the row below. After that skip 2 stitches, now work 1 double crochet into each of next 10 stitches. Join the last two with a double crochet 2 together stitch and then finish the round with a slip stitch. Round 7 is my last round for this leg, so I'm going to cut the yarn, fasten off and then when I finish crocheting, I'm going to hide the yarn tail between the stitches. But if you think the leg is not quite long enough, you can add a few rounds of double crochet stitches to make it longer. You don't need to make any decreases in those rounds, just simple double crochet stitches. Our first leg is now complete, we are going to start with the second one. 
The side with the seam should always be on the back side of the pants. Now place the pants in front of you, right side up and insert the crochet hook into the stitch marked with a stitch marker. Attach the yarn with chain 2 and then repeat the steps we made for the first leg. The pattern is the same for left and right leg. Now you can hop over to my blog and follow the written instructions there or you can go back in the video and watch that part again. If you're not quite confident reading crochet patterns, this might be a great opportunity to try it out. We've already completed one leg and by now you're familiar with the steps you have to take, so it will be much easier to follow the written instructions and get familiar with the stitch abbreviations and other crochet terms. Okay guys, that would be all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel for more crochet tutorials. That's also a great way to support free crochet tutorials on the internet. Like this video if you've learned something new today and share it with your friends that might benefit from it as well. Have a great day, happy crocheting and I see you guys very soon. Bye!